Welcome to Peace Vision. We are, of course, a portal for positive change. The man that I have with us today has been making a lot of changes. It has to do with the water. Please welcome the executive director of Calusa Water Keepers, Casey Schulberg. Welcome. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Pleasure to be with you. What is, for those people that don't know, what is the Calusa Water Keepers? Yeah, it's singular, by the way, Calusa Water Keeper. Um, Calusa Water Keeper is a clean water nonprofit in uh, Lee County. Uh, actually, it spreads over several counties, Hendry, and uh, so it's, it's actually, you know, it, but, but it's primarily located in Lee County. We, we are struggled with uh, trying to clean up the water down here. Uh, so our jurisdiction, and we're part of the Waterkeeper Alliance, which is an international uh, clean water uh, nonprofit operating in 340 chapters around the world on six continents. Uh, we have the license for a, a, a jurisdiction which extends the entire uh, Lake Okeechobee, the Caloosahatchee River, and the estuary is stretching from Charlotte Harbor all the way down to Bonita Springs. So it's an enormous body of water um, that we are responsible for monitoring. Uh, so we're a clean water nonprofit. Uh, we do testing and monitoring of the water. We do advocacy, we do education, and occasionally we do lawsuits when all else fails. Uh, so that's what we do. We're, we're, we're hard at work trying to clean up the water mess down here. We've become, uh, we kind of got backed into becoming experts on blue-green algae and red tide. Um, so we're pretty thoroughgoing experts on those two issues. Uh, we're also dealing with fecal indicator bacteria in a lot of our waterways. And, and just the impairment of some of our precious waterways down here. Every, everybody that I know wants clean water. Um, not everyone yeah. knows what they can do personally to help that happen. And then on yeah. a bigger scale, I think a lot of people are confused as to who's to blame and they get caught up in the blame game without finding the solution game. So can you tell us about what we can do and how can we help? Well, you know, there's things we can do on a number of different levels. There's things we can do personally in our own lives, you know, all the way from reducing fertilizer, not using fertilizer, to going native plants and getting rid of your lawns and, uh, you know, making sure your septic tank is inspected and, and in proper working condition. And those, those are all things we can personally do, uh, you know, on our, on our properties. Uh, and if you live near a, car a canal, uh, you're going to create a setback so that you're, uh, you're, you get five, five to ten feet uh, back from the canal, which is not planted, planted with just native plants. So that basically we're, we're trying to reduce the number of nutrients going into our waterways. This is the challenge because nutrients, and you know, it's ironic, we call them nutrients, which sounds like vitamins, but nutrients is what feeds uh, all kinds of algae that plague us, uh, whether they be cyanobacteria, Blue green algae or or Corania brevis, which is red tide, as you, as I'm sure most of your listeners know, uh, blue green algae is a uh, freshwater phenomenon, and red tide or Corania brevis is a marine phenomenon. But they're both fed by the same things: nutrients, basically phosphate and nitrate, which is a lot of our sewage and contaminants, and they uh, run off our landscapes and into the water, and they create all these problems for us. So we need to all reduce the number of nutrients going into our waterways. So we can do that on a personal basis by, you know, uh, adjusting our personal lifestyles um, and then advocating on the legislative uh, basis, uh, whether it's locally, uh, whether it's on a city basis or a county basis or a statewide basis or a federal basis, advocating for better policy is also really, really important. Are you making any progress on that front and have politicians come around to see your point of view? Well, because there was such outcry after the 2018 blooms and, uh, you know, there seemed to be a moment in time when people were universally focused on this issue of clean water, uh, we did get um, more, I would say, uh, incrementally uh, more consensus on uh, the problems that we face. Uh, of course, that quickly breaks down into political positioning uh, with the status quo digging in their heels, 
and people who are a little bit more uh, advocacy oriented, pushing for more change. So that is that is an issue that that uh, continues to this day. There's a big water bill going through the Florida uh, State Congress now called SB 712, which is called the Clean Water Act, uh, which does some things, uh, but it doesn't do nearly enough. So we're actually uh, we're, we're aside from being the water keeper for this area, this part of Southwest Florida, we're members of the uh, Water Keepers Florida, which is a, co a collection of 14 water keepers throughout Florida. And then we're members of the International Water Keeper Alliance. So occasionally we all, all the Florida water keepers get together and put forward papers dealing with statewide issues. So we're creating a pushback on SB 712 right now, which will be probably ready in about a week. Because uh, that, that, even though that uh, legislation looks like it's going to pass, uh, it has not been signed into law yet. So uh, we have we have a couple of issues with with that bill that we're going to put forward in the next couple of weeks. Um, and one of the other things I know you've been doing is making a film about the uh, situation with the blue green algae and the cyanobacteria, et cetera. Tell me about yeah. that. How's that been going? Well, we made we made a film last year. Uh, it was funny because we we got a little bit bit of money from the Southwest Florida Community Foundation, which is really one of our treasures in Southwest Florida. Uh, they fund so much worthwhile work uh, throughout the county and, and Southwest Florida in general. So we got a, a small grant uh, from them, which allowed us to do a movie. Started out as a six minute movie. Uh, as we began to explore the, the contents, it became a 12 minute movie and then a 20 minute movie as we were making it and it ended up being uh, just shy of 40 minutes. So um, that movie is, is out. We premiered it uh, August 5th of last year uh, to a sold out audience at the Broadway Palm Theater. And we just last week put it online for uh, in-home streaming. So that is a pretty, pretty interesting documentary, 40 minutes long, crammed with information on the public health concerns uh, about uh, HABs, which are harmful algae blooms. Harmful algae blooms refer to both blue-green algae and red tide. Uh, so, uh, and we have a lot of the, you know, foremost scientists in the world working on these issues in the documentary, including uh, Dr. Paul Cox out of the um, brain chemistry labs in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Uh, Walter Bradley, chairman emeritus of the neurology department at the University of Miami. Larry Brand, David Davis. Um, so this uh, is a science-based science -based movie that is new information that most people have not heard. Is that right? Uh, the, the documentary is science-based, though we did, uh, we had sort of three pools of people that we interviewed. We interviewed researchers on the front line studying these uh, toxic algae blooms and how, why they're, how they're created and what their effects are. We interviewed doctors and nurses on the front line who were dealing with patients. And then we interviewed a third subset, which was just individual people who were physically harmed by the blue-green algae or red tide. So uh, we did a kind of cross-section, cross uh, research and walk, scientists, doctors walking and, and individuals. Walking away, what was the takeaway for you at the end of the day? Uh, well, that this is an enormous issue and, and an issue that, that, that really needs to be addressed and the, uh, you know, how it's affecting our health uh, is of grave concern. Uh, this is no, no joking matter. Um, people are getting sick. Uh, some of the effects may not, be, may not manifest for 10 years because, uh, you know, there's a lot of evidence that the uh, cyanobacteria uh, contained in blue-green algae is directly linked to uh, premature Alzheimer's, ALS, and Parkinson's, and those effects sometimes don't trigger for 10 years. But, you know, we've got an elderly population in Southwest Florida, so this is a, a particular concern to us down here. So, but, and we did a lot of, uh, we did a lot of investigation in the documentary into the aerosolized nature of these contaminants. In other words, how do they travel through the air? We've how known, far inland, right? Yeah, we've known for years that if you go in the water and get it on your, you know, you get blue-green algae on your face and, you you know, it's not good for you. Dogs slap it up and they die. Uh, ingesting fish contaminated with these toxins is dangerous. That we've known. Uh, 
So, but you can avoid going in the water and you can avoid eating shellfish or fish from these uh, contaminated bodies of water, but it's very hard not to breathe the air. So this is what we were concerned with, is what, is, what might be the spread and what is the likelihood uh, of risk or what is the, con the possibility of risk uh, given a, a radius of whether it's one or three or five miles. Because in Southwest Florida and in Fort Myers and this, in this area, most people live within five miles of a body of water, so it basically affects everybody. This is this was a, uh, we, we did a kind of a focus on the aerosolized nature of these contaminants to show people what the possibility of risk was. Scary, scary stuff. So um, to wrap this up, can you tell us if somebody wants to get involved with your organization, do you accept volunteers? And if so, what do they do? Yeah, I mean, we've got a whole bunch of different kind of uh, entry points. Uh, you can just donate to us. We, we would happily accept it. We've got, you know, we do testing every week. We've got our own laboratory, so we're able to conduct some tests in house. Some of them we have to send out uh, for, for, you know, to certified labs. So you could just donate. You can become a member. We've got about 350 members now, and those members are a little more preferred, and they get more information and some perks, and uh, they get invited to our annual member dinner and stuff like that. Uh, you can also become a ranger. We have now 84 volunteer science rangers who get some science training. Uh, typically, they'll do three two-hour sessions and get trained up on basic uh, hydrology, uh, you know, water water quality issues and advocacy. Because a lot of our rangers attend town halls and they go and report back to us what happens at a given town hall. I mean, basically. You know, we, John Cassani, who's our waterkeeper and an extraordinary resource in Southwest Florida, has really has one of the most thoroughgoing knowledges of the water issues in our area. Uh, but he and I can't do everything. So uh, the Rangers kind of exponentially help us. Uh, they help us do testing every month and uh, they uh, attend town halls and they uh, advocate for us. So uh, once they get trained up a little bit on uh, water, the water science, and the advocacy, then uh, we, we, we let them represent us in a way to uh, amplify our efforts. So that's another way. Uh, or just, uh, just contact us. Contact us on Facebook. Uh, we got a very robust Facebook page where we're putting out information all the time. And what, what's the name of the page and what's your URL to donate? Yeah, just Calusa Waterkeeper. So it's C-A-L-U-S-A -S Waterkeeper, W-A-T-E-R-K-E-E-P-E-R.org is the website, the Facebook is Calusa Waterkeeper. Same thing for Instagram uh, and Twitter, Calusa, Calusa Waterkeeper. So we're available, you know, we're kind of present on all those platforms and uh, we'd, love, uh, we'd love to have more help. You know, this is uh, an issue that really affects everybody in Florida. Uh, you know, whether you're talking about the economics or the quality of life or, uh, you know, the quality of the, of the air and water that the air we breathe and the water we drink. This is really uh, fundamental stuff. So we, we would welcome, uh, welcome anybody's uh, help and participation. And we thank excellent, you. For excellent cause. We'll certainly do all we can to get the word out. Yeah. Casey Schilberg, thank you so much for all you do for all of us here in Southwest Florida. It's always great to see you. We will, of course, have more from Casey and his team to keep you posted on what's happening with our water. Have thank a great you. Day. Thank you, John. And thank you, Dave, for what you guys do. It's really fabulous. Uh, Peace Vision and, and uh, all the work you're doing to put out a positive message in the world. Appreciate it.